Uh, I'm over at uh, <coughs> Green Myford, the one with the um, cross feed. Now I'm uh, about to test accuracy of this lathe. What we have uh, in the testing machine tools from Schlesinger or other moder more modern DIN standards, but at least it's the same test as you find here. So before I take the spindle, the end float measurement, I just uh, want to explain a li little bit or briefly about the way I do the spindle adjustment here. Um, or the bearing adjustment, we can say. Spindle, of course, then floats, uh, so to speak, axially between the, um, the double settle uh, bearings back here. That functions also as stress bearing and the end, the front here, which is of course tapered. So the way to to set up the spindle correctly, according to the manual, is to add the necessary preload on the thrust bearing here, squeezing these two bearings together, and then to move the um, the whole uh, assembly back and forth, and then back in this case to the to you meet, let's say, and stop here. And then loosen up again a little bit and uh, they say 15 degrees so to uh, test the uh, end float here i use the tailstock i can use of course in and out by hand here also but i prefer to use the tailstock and tighten it down and then measure as you can see i get it down to with a reasonable pressure down to three or four hundreds of a millimeter and um, after I've done that I may have to go back so setting the 15 degrees tighten this I may have to go back here to tighten up the inner races so that the thrust bearing get the preload necessary and then of course tighten down again then you should have a working order spindle and then to the let's say the measurement I push down so I push down or lift up and as you can see there is hardly any movement I switch to the one thousandth of a millimeter indicator and the face, the diameter. I will also then, of course, test it with, an, with a, um, a test bar. You can zero the indicator here. Zero there, then rotate and getting let's say five or half uh, hundreds of a millimeter five thousands which is um, two tenths or two ten, ten thousandths of an inch and now set up to the face which is also the chuck register So I'm reading maybe one or half there and uh, one half I say two two thousands of a millimeter which is less than one ten thousandths of an inch so very good Uh, 
and then we test the anomaly, which is two hundredths of a millimeter, which is so. Uh, Eight ten thousandths of an inch, and then the same uh, measurement but um, towards the truck. So, run out here is well, I'd say less than or well, maybe five thousandths of a millimeter, which is two ten thousandths of an inch. And then the measurement on the axial uh, alignment, you can call it, which I'll of course be as close to zero as possible. So if we have zero the indicator here now, there, and you should run it, and it can point a little bit this way. That shall be zero, of course. So it is pointing one hundredths or how that is four thousandths of an inch uh, to the operator, which is the correct way. So and then the test in out like this. So we have zeroed it here and go back. And it stays at zero. So we can adjust it to zero there also. Just to prove it is. And go back again. Zero. Great. Out here you also have a, a run out of the face and on the on the rim of the face plate. So I'll test that. So the, for the first test I'm just um, trying to find the face run out and I can take it at the rim because I know it's it's um, it's not bad. I'll just zero the indicator there. Okay, a little bit that way. So it is. One thousandth of an inch or two and a half hundredths of a millimeter. And then we'll test uh, the run out here. Let's see. Okay. So we call that the same, one thousandths or two and a half hundredths of a millimeter. And this is the way I test the uh, facing accuracy. Um, either with a, you can do that on, on this, I guess, itself or on a bigger uh, face plate. But I chuck up here a, um, called the test bar which is proven flat and then you just prove it to be at the exact uh, let's say the zero position here 
as you do here. And knowing that it is flat, and if it's not repeating, you just adjust and snug up. So fairly simple. And the way I'm checking the facing accuracy or adjusting it is uh, <clears throat> first of all checking it and then uh, trying with shims in the rear here, first loosening up. Of course, uh, these screws, inserting the what I think is the correct shim, testing until I get it uh, flat. And of course you have to tighten up these screws. So zero, and uh, then you just test it in and out, and it stays at zero. And then, of course, what is needed is to scrape the necessary amounts of whatever shim I put in there. I know how much to scrape and I like to divide this area here into pads like this so I have two pads so then if I insert shims there means that I should tilt the this way and I have to scrape off this amount here. So now I have reworked the surfaces at the rear guide here. Zero the indicator and then I can run the indicator along the path here and it stays within half a hundreds not less than that just a few few tenths or that could be the surface here also and now we're testing the tailstock which shall of course be straight ahead and the lungs were a little bit up and then also sideways a little bit towards the, the operator, so to speak. So zero the indicator there, running it down. You can see it rises by a little amount. That's okay. This a measurement to the front. Still the indicator there. Tighten. And then move forwards. And it is high. So it points a little bit there also to two hundreds of a millimeter. And then the tailstock taper on top, then later on the side, shall be straight of course, a little bit up or towards the operator is allowed. So uh, zero and then we see it is dead knots. And of course here it, of course here it is important to tighten the the clamp there. And then to the side, we zero the indicator there and go out. And it says two and a half. So in again, so it's the correct right direction, and uh, that's a little bit about what it's uh, recommended, but as you can see, it's not much pressure needed, and it's important to tighten the clamp here also, which we'll see shall not measure much difference but a little bit 
course the barrel shall be snug in the bore here and that's what you see here if it is not then you will have a big difference here with the clamp and i have adjusted now the tailstock sideways so that um what you see here on the deflection is the actual the test bar error but also the accuracy of the um, uh, lathe bed so as you can see it is stationary within one hundredth of a millimeter So I guess better than that also, five thousandths over the entire length of the test bar. So testing on top here, so uh, should remain the same, reading is zero there. So we are traveling towards the tailstock, goes a little bit up, zero again there. Like that, and then going a little bit down. So that's correct. Good.